Go back to Genesis chapter 28. We just have to follow the word of God concerning marriage. When you now read verse 7, Jacob obeys his father and his mother and was gone to Pandanaram. Praise God. I say praise God. Another lesson I want you to learn, want us to learn from this is that daddy and mommy were united here. Do you see it? Do you see it in that verse? He said and that Jacob obeyed his father and, and his mother and was gone to Pandanara. Brethren, husband and wife should be one in the family when it comes to raising children and doing everything. Anywhere you are not agreed, just leave it and be praying about it. The moment your children see that you are divided, you are in trouble. A house that is divided against itself cannot do what? Cannot stand. So God wants mommy and daddy to be on the same page for the glory of God and because of the children too. This is very, very important. This is the way God wants us to function. There are families that the husband will be going this way, the wife will be going this way. My wife can tell you, we know wives that are building houses in this town and the husband does not know anything about it. I say, Pastor, come and help me to dedicate, to do the foundation for the house. I say, where is that? He say, ah, 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 ah. I say, ah, madam, Go leave this thing. Go bring your husband. I will, you will not see me there. But I will not even pray for you. Then some of them will break down. And say, ah, you don't know my husband. <laughs> One prophet say anything he knows that I am doing. The thing will not work again. I say because the two of you are unbelievers. My own. When I tell my wife, that's when the thing will, will, will now accelerate. <laughs> but your own, when you tell your wife, that's the devil. That's contrary to the word of God. Some of us are doing things that you just cut off your wife. You are supposed to be united. Two heads are better than one. That's the way God made it. You are not complete without your wife. Your wife is not complete without you. If you are taking decision alone without your wife, hmm, it's half of you taking decision. She was taken out of the man. So you are not complete without her. And you are not complete also without him. This is the word of God, brethren. Anything that, that differs from this is worldliness. Worldliness. And if you are always dominating your family, let me tell you, you are of the devil. Either the wife or the husband is dominating. The two of you are of the devil. It's God that should dominate the family. It's not uh, uh, anything my husband say. Rather, the husband must hear from God. So in your mal family, you have to be very careful. The devil can hijack, the prince of this world can hijack your marriage. And you will think that you are a Christian. It's God that do show, it should be Christ-centered. I've taught you this. Some people will say, ah, it's whatever my wife say. It's wrong. It's wrong. That's not Bible. That's what Adam did in the Garden of Eden and Satan took over. They, it was the wife that took the wrong decision. Contrary to God, they removed God from the center of their marriage. And that was all. Brethren, when we are talking about worldliness, it encroaches in our marriage. We should be very careful. The loss of the flesh has to do with self. We always want to do things to please self rather than pleasing God. No. You are not of the world. You are of Christ. See what the Bible says here. In this verse 7. Jacob obeyed his father and his mother. There was unity. In that verse, can you see that Jacob also obeyed his father and mother? Praise the Lord. This is for our youth. They obeyed parental authority. This is 
God's, you know, family authority of daddy and mother is divine authority. Many of us do not understand this. Though. Even in the house of God is divine authority. Praise the Lord. Father and mother are God's delegated authority in the home. If you break it, you are breaking God's authority. All our teenagers, any of those go. When your mother is talking to you and you jam the door, bah! mommy is talking and you walk out. You are you are defying God's authority. Jacob did not do that. He obeyed. And do you know there are some people, some of us that will say, God has not talked to me about that. <laughs> Let me tell you, God uses people to talk to you, your spiritual fathers and mothers. You don't have to hear from God all the time like that. Do you hear what I am saying? Eh? God used the father, experienced father and mother in Christ. They said, don't dwell here in Cana. Go to, he didn't say, I want to pray. I want to pray about it. He did what? What did he do? He obeyed. Do you know that's the word of God? Obey your mother and your father. That it may be well with you. And that your days may be long upon the earth which the Lord your God has given to you. Most of us don't know this. Oh. When you have worked with somebody with experience in God, whom you know is not like this. Somebody who hears from God. When he puts something to you that you know this is a matter of life and destiny. You just don't say, no, I have to pray. I have to think about it. And you are claiming this is your spiritual father and mother. Obey your parents. That's Bible. This is the only command with a promise attached in the Bible. It's awesome. I wish I can expand it this morning. Many of us will be crying. This is the word of God. Do you know Jesus obeyed his father and mother? As great as he was, go and read your Bible. He submitted to them and obeyed them. Even though he knew more than them and he was more superior to them. You can't claim that you are a child of God and you are disobeying your parents in the Lord on the platform of spirituality that I want to pray. In as long as what they are telling you to do is not scriptural, is not, is scriptural and biblical. One of the serious problems we have in the church today is that people do not obey their spiritual parents. And when you have a biological parent also who are spiritual, happy are you when you listen to them. Can you imagine Elisha and Elijah? Elisha say, where you go? I will go. Tie together. That was a spiritual father. People were trying to cut his... Your father will be taken today away from you. Say, I know, leave me. There was that connection. Say, stay here. And you know, when you watch spiritual people, the way they talk, they don't force people. It's just like Elijah said, stay here, I'm going. Many of you don't read your Bible. And when you see spirituality, you don't, you cannot discern it. A true minister of God will not be Lord over you. A true spiritual parent. Jacob obeyed. I want to charge all of you here that have parents who are godly. Biological parents. Please obey them in Christ. This is marriage. This is the way of the world. Not the way of the world. 
But let's see Esau. In verse 8. This is very sad. Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan please not Isaac, his father. Then went Esau to Ishmael. Can you see, can you see what this man did? Since you don't like Canaan, the Canaan, Canaanites, then I'm going to marry an Ishmaelite. And he took on, unto the wives which he had, Mahalat, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebujoth, Nebajoth, to be his wife. But Jacob went from Beersheba and went towards Aram. Praise the Lord. I will stop here this morning. But do you see what Ishmael, what Esau did? Eh? <laughs> do you see what he, he did? You know, Isaac gave birth to Jacob and Esau. Abraham gave birth to Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael does not have the covenant. The blessing was upon Jacob. Hallelujah. But Ishmael will be very, very wealthy. But the covenant of life was not with him. So when Esau wanted to marry now, he said, I will not marry the Canaanites. But look at where he went. Ishmael. He said, at, at least Abraham was the one that gave birth to Ishmael. So we are of the same lineage. These are the people of God. But let me tell you, the blessing of God was not on Ishmael. It was on Isaac. Ishmael is a type of unbelieving believers. Eh? They are born by the same father, Abraham. But they don't have the life of God in them. God has no covenant with them. Covenant of life. Are you hearing me? Do you know there are Ishmaelites here this morning? Eh? They are here. Ishmaelites are people that are identified with Abraham. The father of faith. But they are from Hagar. The woman that has to do with law. They, do, they have not experienced the grace of God in their heart. So when you want to marry. You look for blessing. Hallelujah. Not just any believer. You look for the covenant in that life. If you want to, you see, Esau went the way of the world. And he never fulfilled God's purpose. You know why? Because there was no transformed heart. When your heart is not transformed, you keep on making mistakes. His heart has not been changed yet. He was a man that was ruled by his emotion. You know when you are a believer and you are ruled by your emotion, very, very dangerous. He said, give me the food now. Lest I die. His emotion. I genuinely can you walk out? Eh? Just one muzzle of uh, okay, your food. But his emotion was controlling. And do you know how he got that emotion? It was from his father. Isaac also had problem with appetite. He wanted to shift the blessing. Eh? He called the Esau, go and get me Phoenician that I may eat and bless you. He cut it from so, we can bless you. You know, there are a type of pastors like that. 
The moment you give them money now, won't work bad do that woman lag. Then you can buy the tobacco for money, one thousand. I give me a little goblin. Someone load your home. And there are Christians like that that are ruled by their emotion. It's their emotion talking to them and they think it's the spirit of God. After eating it now, would you a wale? The blessing has been taken away. I pray this will not happen to any of us in the name of Jesus Christ. The problem with Esau was that he was not transformed within. He has not been changed. He was always making one mistake to another. One mistake from one mistake to another. All that I've talked about this morning. Until your heart is changed, you can't do it. When your heart is changed, God gives you a new desire. When you want to marry, you can disarm people with the blessing of God on their life. You are not just marrying for academics. You are looking for where the blessing is. Esau went to marry an unbelieving believer. They are unbelieving believers. During your courtship, you can know them. Let me tell you this morning. When your heart is changed, you begin to be hungry after God. Let's pray. Stress up on your feet. I want my wife to come and help me here. Just pray. You have to pray about your marriage this morning. Don't forget, yoking has to do with purpose. Fellowship has to do with values. Communion has to do with your doctrinal life. You need to pray that you will not miss it. It's better not to marry. That to marry somebody who will distract your, the purpose of God in your life inside the bush and divert it into the graveyard. Yes. Let's open our mouth and begin to appreciate God for what we have had this morning. Mm. Appreciate Him. Appreciate the Lord Jesus. Wonderful name. Wonderful life. A God that loves us so much. Let us praise His holy name. Let us thank Him for creating marriage. Instituting marriage. Marriage is for your benefit. Marriage is for your profit. Marriage is to help you to fulfill God's purpose in life. So that your life will not be dry. So that the devil can, will not be able to destroy you and destroy God's purpose in your life. Appreciate God for the institution of marriage. Thank God for how he has helped you so far. If you are married, appreciate God for the way he has chosen for you. If you are having struggles, thank God because he's going to see you through just like your father daddy said. You are having a problem because you made a mistake in the area of choice. Thank God because the Lord will help you. His grace will see you through. You are not yet married. Thank God because you have not made a mistake yet. And you will not make it in Jesus' name. Appreciate God because there is somebody that he has for you. God has somebody that he has destined for you before the foundation of the world. I want you to thank God because that person is the person God will lead you to. Begin to thank God because you will not be drawn in the way of the world. You will not be drawn in the way of the world. Open your mouth and begin to ask the Lord to help you. You have heard the word of God. Mm. You make a mistake in marriage, you are doomed. It's not easy to, to come out of it. Those that have made the mistake, they are sorrowing to today. I want you to pray that the Lord will help you as a young man, as a young lady that will not make this mistake. You will not pick an arm robber for a wife, a husband. You will not pick a Jezebel for a wife. 
pray that the Lord will help you, that God will help you to design somebody that will have the same value system. Pray that God will not allow you to have desire towards a Canaanite in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, you are never attracted to children of God. No, they don't form attraction for you. It's only seen as your heart is drawing to. I want you to pray, oh, it is the snare of the devil you have had daddy said. That is because Satan wants to drag you to hell. That's why he's making to be attracted to people that will destroy your life. I want you to pray this morning that the Lord will help you. He will help your heart. It's a matter of the heart. Pray that the Lord will help your heart to be focused on Jesus. So that the person he destined for you is the one that will be attracted by you. Pray and talk to God. Commit your heart to the Lord. Your very heart. Commit to the Lord that God will help you not to be yoked together with somebody that will break your back. Mm. If you are yoked together or equally yoked together, your back can be broken spiritually. The devil will weaken you. Pray to the Lord, oh God, please help me. Oh. I don't want an unequal yoke. I don't want to marry a Canaanite. I don't want to marry an unbeliever. Help me to design people that we have the same value system. People that respect God. People that make God number one in their lives. That's a person you can enjoy marriage with. That's a person you can enjoy life with. That's a person that you can fulfill God's destiny with. I want you to pray that the Lord will help you. The spirit of discernment. That you will not be lured into, into picking in another man's bones in the name of Jesus. No unequal yoke. No unequal yoke. It will destroy you. Pray that you will not fall into that trap in the name of Jesus. And if you are already being drawn, can you pray that the Lord will deliver you this morning? Tell the Lord you are giving up such relationship. Your heart is telling you that, hmm, this person you are cutting is not it all. So many things are at stake. You don't see the same way. Even doctrinally, you are not you are not the same. You are thinking righteousness is thinking sin. Ah, pray that the Lord will help you to be able to break the relationship if necessary in the name of Jesus Christ. Those of you that are suffering delay, break the yoke this morning in the name of Jesus. Some of you are already of marriage age. Nobody is coming. Sometimes people that are coming are unbelievers. Break the yoke in your life this morning. You have children that are of, of marriageable age and nothing is coming for. Break the yoke in the name of Jesus. The Lord Jesus has gone to Calvary so that every yoke can be broken in our life. In Jesus' name we pray.